This is what the Earth looked like before the dinosaurs era. At the start, our Earth was nothing like what we see today. The Earth passed several eras and cosmic events to become this beautiful green planet. So what was it at the start? Dinosaurs are intriguing, but what was before them? How was the Earth formed? We have answers to all these questions. In this video, we will look at the formation of Earth and the historical eras that led to the evolution of dinosaurs. So if you're interested in knowing about the past of the Earth, stay tuned as we go back in time. A massive gas cloud known as a nebula that was constantly rotating crashed into on itself some 4.6 billion years ago due to its mass, crushing all the gaseous stuff inside into the plane. The sun developed at the center of this disk over 100,000 years after the collapse, with the remaining nebular gas swirling around it. This gas was almost entirely composed of hydrogen and helium. Outside of the sun, gases and other substances in this disk began to group in diverse places. Planetesimals are tiny planets that were created as a result of frequent collisions between these bodies. Within 100,000 years of the sun's formation, these potential planets got larger by attracting more matter as a result of increasing gravitational forces and finally becoming real planets. The four terrestrial planets, Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars, formed far more slowly than the gas and ice giants, Jupiter and Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. A Mars-sized object collided with the newly created Earth some 4.54 billion years ago, partially melting the surface and ejecting molten material into space. For a few months, this ejecta circled our planet as a ring before coming to become the moon. The streams and waves in space are caused by residual gases that were still slowly circling the sun. Enormous Jupiter became entangled in these currents and began to turn toward the sun. As this giant moved and danced around, its strong gravity wreaked havoc and knocked asteroids loose, sending them hurtling towards our planets. The Earth and other terrestrial planets experienced a period of continuous bombardment from asteroids and other smaller bodies throughout the following few million years. Fortunately, Jupiter was soon being pulled back towards its current location by Saturn. The Earth was still cooling after Moon's formation during this time, and the bombardment phase kept it disturbed and volcanically active. At some point, water ice containing asteroids or comets collided with the Earth, releasing a large amount of water vapor. This vapor condensed when the Earth cooled and began to fall as rain. As volcanic activity continued, supervolcanoes survived. Even beneath the newly developed oceans, for 700 million years, lava continuously flowed on the surface. After the Earth formed, roughly 100 million years later, the temperatures were stable enough for a crust to develop and exist. Due to volcanic activity, there were almost no oxygen in the atmosphere, but there was a lot of carbon dioxide, nitrogen, and sulfur. Multiple little land masses emerged after another half million years. These later evolved into the point of focus around which the modern continents formed. These rocks, which date back 4.4 billion years, are the oldest ones that are currently found on Earth. The planet had cooled down a suitable temperature by the middle of the Precambrian. As of yet, there was no oxygen in the atmosphere. Two supercontinents known as Valabara and UR developed roughly 3.5 billion years ago almost half a billion years apart. These continents were quite small, probably about the size of India. However, the absence of oxygen in the air did not indicate the absence of life. Prokaryotes were the first life forms on Earth when it came to early Precambrian period, 4.1 billion years ago, in deep thermal vents. They used the carbon compounds that were building up in early waters of the Earth. As time went on, additional species joined, using substances like sulfides and water for photosynthesis and producing oxygen as a byproduct. A new supercontinent called Kenorland emerged around the same time when Valabara broke apart, with pieces of it ending up in modern-day Australia and Africa. 
Early life, which was barely beginning to develop, was also disappearing quickly as photosynthesis increased the oxygen content in the atmosphere and oceans. Numerous unicellular life forms perished, and the survivors were frozen in suspension by the all-consuming cold. The supercontinent Canorland began to fragment, creating Rodinia, as our planet progressively froze with layers of ice accumulating on land and in ocean. As a result, volcanic activity was reactivated. The Earth began to warm up because the sun once it reached its cooling limit. When the Earth's temperature reached an appropriate level, a new species called Eukaroit emerged. This organism had RNA, a proper membrane, and utilized oxygen as its source of energy. Ozone protective layer formation began, supporting favorable conditions for life. However, Earth's dark ages were not yet done. Massive, sudden rifts in the ocean floor appeared as Rodinia began to collapse. This led to an era of snowball Earth, increased rainfall, and heating of the crust. From the poles to the center of the equator, ice caps and glacier cover the whole surface of the planet. A surge of nutrients entered the water as a result of increased volcanism in the seas caused by the breakup of the land masses. The sponge was the first animal to emerge after the ice cap. Life finally made the transition from the ocean to the land due to the ocean floor expanding and the formation of several shallow seas. A period of clearly defined life started. During this time, blue-green algae came into being. For the first time, meiosis and sexual reproduction happened in the eukaryotes. The first animal cells split from plant cells and started eating plants. Fungi, worms, and other small, bilaterally symmetrical creatures developed. Complex life forms started to emerge during this time. Protozoans, including paramecium, amoebas, and melanocerium, were more evolved. Fish, arthropods, mollusks, and echinoderms were among them. The earliest air-breathing animals appeared when plants and animals first started coexisting on land during this time. During this time, the oceans witnessed the evolution of sharks, starfish, and horseshoe crabs. In the sea, ray finned fish were discovered, and scorpions started to appear on land along with the evolution of nultoids and fish with teeth in the ocean. Marine mollusks called nultoids include octopi, squids, snails, and slugs. Insect development started after a few million years. Freshwater systems were home to the jawless cephalophysis, a fish with a bony exoskeleton. Large sharks, hagfish, and ratfish evolved, and ferns and crabs started to appear often. It was believed that this period's climate was tropical with just a few seasonal fluctuations. During this period, reptiles evolved into more lizard-like body plants with a backbone that allowed them to live and move on land. And amphibians started to diversify. Pangaea, a huge landmass that included all the current continents, was there about 360 million years ago. The first complex plant, the cycad, emerged when the plant kingdom started to diversify. Many large animals ruled the earth during this time. Diplocerebus was one of the strange species that inhibited those swamps. It had a salamander-like body and a boomerang-like head. Scientists also discovered the fossil of a giant dragonfly the size of an eagle. This species is known as a manganura. Another creature was Arthropleura, a gigantic centipede stretched to the length of eight feet or longer. In addition, scientists believe that there may have been spiders the size of cats. Larger reptiles evolved. The planet grew hotter and drier. Between giant amphibians and the earliest dinosaurs, reptiles filled the gap. One such animal was the meat-eating Dimitrodon, which was roughly 5 meters long and had a sizable protrusion on its back like a sailor fin. Fish with real backbone skeletons evolved in the oceans. Coral, sponges, and rays all continued to thrive along with sharks. Insects on land have developed mouth parts designed for sucking and piercing. Beetles, cockroaches, and cicadas also evolved during this time. The earth was prospering, but did not last long. Nearly 252 million years ago, a disaster known as the Great Dying, which wiped out 90% of all marine species and 70% of land creatures, caused a mass extinction. 
This is regarded as the most severe and catastrophic mass extinction that has ever taken place on Earth. There is evidence that large volcanic eruptions following dense ash and dust clouds occurred in modern Siberia and China. Due to the volcanic clouds, the world would have experienced a drastic drop in temperature, leading to nuclear winter and widespread glaciers. Food sources would have been exhausted and plants were unable to photosynthesize. Ecosystems on land and in the ocean collapsed due to a shortage of food and high ocean carbon dioxide levels. As a result, all known life started to perish, even forests were affected. It took the world about 10 million years to recover after the great dying and form a stable ecosystem. What happened after that is a story for another video. Share with us if we have missed any important details. Like, share, and subscribe to the channel to see more interesting videos like this.